so let's begin with Google Mail. Here are the ob our objectives for today under Google Mail. So setting up a Gmail account, familiarize the Gmail interface, sending and responding to emails, and managing your emails. So let's start in setting up your Gmail account. So Gmail is a free email service provided by Google. So it is like any other email service wherein you can send emails, receive emails, block spams, and other basic email tasks. So similar din siya sa Yahoo. Okay, so in creating a Gmail account, first we will go to www.gmail.com. So, ma-prant sa atin yan kung magsasign in tayo with Google. So, if wala pa tayong account, simply click lang natin create account. So, if meron na tayong account sa Google, i-enter lang natin yung ating email or phone number dyan sa space. Then, pag inex natin yan siya, ma-prant tayo to input our password. So, for example, wala pa tayong Google account. So, create tayo ng account. Next. After that, may mag-prompt sa atin to input some of our details that includes our first and last names, yung ating username, and our password. So make sure yung ating password is strong para hindi agad-agad ma-hack and mag-guess ng kahit sino. It is advisable to use a combination of characters, letters, and numbers, and um Capital and small letters. Combination yan, much better. After that, ma-prompt na tayo to verify our phone number. Dahil sa phone number na yan, magsisend ang verification code or yung one-time PIN. So, do not share your verification code or OTP. Kahit Google account man niya or anything. Pag may ma-receive kayo, check nyo agad muna yung yung account kasi maybe someone is trying to open your account. Any account, maybe land bank, your social media accounts, or other accounts you have. So do not share. So kahit na mga professionals, kung mapansin ninyo, nagtataka kayo bakit kahit sila nasa scam ng mga ganito, di ba? Kasi maganda yung kanilang way. In short, yung business talk. So mauhuli ka talaga, lalo na sa mga banks, di ba? Pero malaman mo if it is a scam, kapag hihingiin na sa'yo, yung last three digits ng iyong account and yung OTP. Diyan ka na mag-alarm. Okay? So, do not share your verification code and OTPs to anyone. Next. After entering your verification code, so magpa-prompt ulit si Google to input some of your details to confirm your phone number to have your recovery email address. So, ang recovery email address should be active. Pwede mo naman lagyan yan, pwede hindi. Pero it is much better na lagyan mo if ever na malos ka pagdating sa password mo and all. Madali mo lang ma-recover yung account. Then input in yung ating birthday and yung ating gender. Then after that, magpa-prompt na ang privacy and terms ni Google. Normally, kahit ako, hindi ko rin binabasa yan. Pero due to the increasing uh, alertness and security natin sa data privacy, kailangan na po natin yan basahin para aware tayo kung ano yung ginagawa ng Google sa ating mga information and data. So, next, click mo lang yung agree. Then, you now have your own Google account. Kapag bagong create ka pa lang ng Google account mo, uh, mag maglalag in na siya automatically. Okay, what if nakalog out ka, hindi mo napansin? So, para mag-log in, go ka ulit sa gmail.com, input mo lang yung email address, and then enter your password, then click next, then you're in. Gusto mo naman mag-sign out, click mo lang yung gear icon, meron doong sign out button, then you are now signed out. Always remember to sign out your accounts if you're using a public device. Kahit na personal device mo, it is not also it is also advisable na mag-sign out ka in terms of security and data privacy. Next. Let's now familiarize the Gmail interface. So makikita natin dito yung common na interface ng Gmail accounts natin once na ma-open na natin siya. So let's start with the first one. We have the Gmail 
Gmail button sa taas, yung Gmail drop-down menu. So, the Gmail drop-down menu allows you to navigate to your mail, contacts, and task list. Next button is left menu pane, yung nasa kaliwa. So, ang left menu pane is composed of the composed na button, which is the creation of a new mail. Yung ina-navigate natin yung mail natin, makikita na dyan, dyan yung start, yung snooze, important, send, drafts, and yung sa lower part is yung mga labels. Next, yung labels sa bottom part, labels allow you to organize the messages in your inbox. So later, ituturo ko yan kung paano tayo magawa ng labels. Labels are very useful kasi ma-organize niya at ma-declutter niya yung ating inbox, lalo na kapag sunod-sunod yung mga messages na nare-receive natin. And also sa labels, maka-add tayo ng label to more than, more than one label to any message and maka-add pa tayo ng colors para madali natin ma-identify kung anong label ito. Next. Our inbox na nasa gitna. So your inbox is where you receive the messages will appear. You can click a message to read it. So to identify kung medyo baguhan tayo sa Gmail na merong unread message, yan yung nakabold. Yung mga red messages naman natin is hindi naman siya nakabold. Next is the search box sa taas. So, may kita natin sa search box. Pag may gusto tayong search na certain message, tapos madami na masyadong nakahilera ang mga messages sa ating email account, you can search it. Type a keyword, then pag enter mo ng keyword na yon, lahat ng mga mails and messages related to that keyword ay lalabas. Same goes kapag new... Uh, if you're searching for a message, specifically from a specific recipient or person. I-input lang natin dyan sa search mail or search box natin yung email address ng specific recipient. Then lahat ng messages na naging recipient natin siya, naging sender or receiver ay lalabas doon sa ating search box. Next is the side panel. So the side panel allows you to quickly access your calendar, create list, take notes, and keep track of deadlines. These are additional tools na pwede natin gamitin sa Google Mail. For now, doon lang muna tayo sa basics. So hindi muna natin ito siya i-discuss masyado yung nasa side panel. Next is the sending and responding to emails. So first is how do you send an email? So basically, kung mapansin nyo kanina, meron tayo doon compose window. I-click lang natin yun siya. Then, magpa-prompt na yung isang window doon. So yung window na yun, ito nakikita natin dito sa ating screen. So it is composed of the recipients. So yung recipients, kung kanino mo isa-send yung iyong email. We have the CC and BCC. So I, I assume alam niyo naman siguro ang CC, right? Ang sabi ni boss, si sisi mo daw dito, sisi mo doon. Pero hindi mo alam kung ano pala yung sisi na yon. So, sisi means carbon copy. Sa recipients na tab, you will place there the email address of the person where you intend to send the email. CC is um, the email address of the person you want to view the email. Hindi para sa kanya yung email na yon, pero kailangan niya makita yung email. Doon mo ilagay sa CC. For example, may memo na ipapasend si boss. Tapos ang recipient natin is yung ating co-employee, then request ni boss, i-CC siya. Meaning, ang recipient mo, yung co-employee mo, hindi si boss. Pero gusto ni boss ma-view yung email na yon, ilagay natin sa CC. So lahat ng nakalagay na email addresses sa CC, ay mabibview din yung ating recipients. So what if gusto natin i-hide kung kanito natin nakasis yun siya, dyan na papasok yung BCC or Blind Carbon Copy. Okay, same as CC pero nakahide siya sa mga recipients. Okay, next is the subject. So ang subject, commonly, minsan nalilift out natin siya, dapat uh, maging hobby or habi na natin na kailangan natin lagyan ng subject kasi pag blank ang subject sa recipient or send, send, receiving side natin, ang lalabas sa kanilang subject is open close parenthesis no subject. 
So kung ikaw yun, uh, medyo questionable, ano to no subject? Ano kaya to may, may scam ito, virus or spam? Ba like that. So make sure na may laman yung ating subject, it contains what our email is all about. Next, yung body of the message na din. Yung ating send button, formatting options, and adding an attachment. Sa formatting options, makikita natin dyan yung next. Okay, makikita natin dyan yung font styles. Iba't ibang font styles, font size, bold, italic, and underline, text and background color, alignment ng ating text, bullets and list, pati additional options. Yung additional options, makikita ninyo yung symbol ng Google Drive. Meaning, if you want to insert a file na nasave na sa yung Google Drive, i-click mo lang yan siya, then locate it, then Uh, attach it to that. So later, discuss ko yan siya kung paano mag-attach dyan sa may Google Drive na part. Next. Adding a signature. So may mga nagtanong din to sa MIS kung paano mag-add ng signature sa ating mga emails. So adding a signature in pieces professionalism and, le and legit to your email. So, paano maglagay ng signature? So, ang signature na yan ay makikita sa iyong message at the bottom part. Okay? So, it is composed of your name, your office, your office contact details. Huwag po tayo maglalagay ng mga personal details kasi yung ating signature, pag ma-forward yan siya sa ibang um, recipients at if forward sa sunod, madadala siya. So meaning din natin alam kung saan naabot yung ating email at kung lalagay tayo ng mga personal details diyan uh, ma-jeopardize ng ating security and ating data privacy. So how to add a signature? Just click the gear button dun sa ating Google account. So settings, then scroll down lang natin, hanapin natin yung signature na tab, then click natin yung second na button to add our signature. So in adding our signature, meron din diyang formats, maka-add ka ng attachments like images para malagay mo yung logo ng yung office. May bold, italic, may underline na rin siya at meron din siyang text color. So here's an advice, wag po tayo natin masyadong laruin yung ating signature na magmumukha na siyang unprofessional. So remember, nasa office tayo, government office, so kailangan professional yun natin ng ating signature. Choose the most uh, clear and comfortable and professional na font style. Okay na itong sans serif or area times new Roman. Okay na yan. Then bold the necessary details. For example, your name and your contact details. Then use neutral colors like black, uh, red. If you want to highlight something important, green and blue. And don't forget to add the logo of your office or division if meron man. Then after that, save changes and that's it. Meron ka ng signature sa iyong emails. Okay, next. Okay, so let's try yung ating mga na-discuss kanina in composing an email. So, share ko muna yung aking screen. Exit Okay, so dito tayo sa Gmail. Um, okay po ba? Medyo mabilis po ba ako mag-discuss? Mag, sabi lang po kayo ba medyo mabilis ako mag-discuss? Okay, so ito po yung ating Gmail interface. So i-review lang natin to. Nandito yung ating compose, nandito yung ating inbox, nandito yung iba't ibang mga folders, nandito yung labels. Dito yung ating messages, yung settings. Then, yung nine dots dito allows you to access all the other 
app tools, and software tools ni Google Workspace. Okay, nandiyan sila lahat. So, start muna tayo sa composing and email. So, click lang natin yung compose. So, sa pag-compose ng email, okay, salakyan lang natin para makita. Okay, so dito sa 2, i-add natin yung ating recipient. Okay, for example, si MISD, ay si Mubina na lang, si Mox. Next, gusto kong mabasa siya ng aking office, so MISD. Then yung aking subject, example, digital workspace files. Okay, this is our body, so pwede na tayo dito mag-input ng anything. Uh, regarding sa ating message. So, for example, good day or mag-greetings tayo dyan. Then, pwede na natin siyang i-format yung ating text. Punta lang tayo dito sa formatting options. Click natin yan siya at lalabas na yung mga formats na available sa ating Google Mail. So, highlight lang natin yung gusto natin i-change. Like, change natin yung font. Then, change natin yung font size. Change natin yung style. Italic ba siya or bold? Then, I want to change the colors. Nandito rin. And also, you can add background text color. Okay, yan. We can also check the alignments. We have the, the left, center, and right. Okay? So, gusto ko muna siya nagay dito sa left. Then, meron din dito bullet form. Pwede rin siyang naka-number. And we have here the indents. Then, indent more. Then, yung quote. Then, strike through. Ang strike through, maglalagay lang yung siya ng lines sa gitna. And then, the last one is the remove formatting. So, marirremove lahat ng formats. Then, after that, pwede tayong maka-attach ng files. Just click the paper clip here. Then, mapaprompt na siya doon sa ating folder. For example, ito. Double click mo lang. Then, mag upload na siya as attachment. Then, if you want to add a URL dito, click mo lang itong nakapahigang paper clip. Insert link or shortcut niya sa iyong keyboard is Control K. Then, just add the URL you want. For example, yung email na MIS. Okay. Then, mag a na siya into a form of link. Then, also, we have here insert emojis. And dito yung inserting files using Google Drive. For example, meron tayong file na nasa Google Drive. You can click this and then locate the file that you need na nandun sa iyong Google Drive. Okay, for example, uh, click lang tayo dito ng form. For example, gusto ko i-attach ang isang form. Next, pwede din tayo mag-attach ng photo. Just click the insert photo dito. Then, yung ating toggle confidential mode and yung inserting a signature. So, ngayon, wala akong nilagay na signature. Meron akong ginawa previously. Gear-name ko siya as B-T-A-M-I-S-D-E-M-I. Then, i-click ko yan siya. Lalabas na yung aking signature. So, once na isi-send ko ito siya, uh, madadala na rin yung aking signature plus yung confidentiality notice. Okay? Next is si more options. Meron din itong default to full screen. Label. Para alam ko agad kung saan natin ilalagay yung ating email kung Related ba siya sa MISD, social or updates ba siya, forums, promotion, and others? Pwede natin i-print, pwede natin i-check ang spelling, yung grammar checker nila, and smart compose feedback. Okay? So, yan yung basic ng ating sending an email. Next, balik tayo doon sa ating slide. So, stop share ko muna. Okay, so next, after sending an email, we will now proceed to responding to emails. So in responding to emails, we have here the read an email 
opening attachments, replying to emails, forwarding an email, the conversations, and the vacation reply. So to further discuss this one, let's watch a short video on how to respond to emails. Okay, wait lang. Check na natin ang earlier. When somebody sends you an email, there are a few different things that okay, you can ba? do. Marinig na In po. addition to reading Just the email, one. If marinig, type 2 if hindi po. Okay, thank you very much po for the response. So let's continue with the video. You may want to reply to it or forward it to someone else. Or snooze the email and temporarily hide it until you need it. Or maybe the email has an attachment that you want to view or download. Let's start by looking at our inbox. For each message, you'll be able to see the sender, the subject, and maybe a little bit of the body of the message, and also the date that it was sent. If the message is unread, then the text will be bold and the background will be a different color. So these are the messages that I have not read yet, and these are the ones that I have read. If I hover over an email, a few options appear on the right. I can quickly archive or delete the email, mark it as read, or snooze the email, which temporarily removes it from your inbox for a set amount of time. I'm going to click on this message so I can read it. You can read the message here, and you can click the drop-down arrow if you want to see more information about who sent the message and who the recipients are. After you read the message, you can go back to your inbox, or click one of these arrows to view a different message. For really important messages, you may want to add a star by clicking here. This will help you find the message later on. If you want to quickly respond to a message, you can use the Smart Reply options here. Or you can click Reply and respond to just the sender. Or you can click Reply to All, which will include all of the original recipients. You can also forward the message to someone else. In this case, I want to reply to all so that everybody stays in the loop. Then you can type your message. You'll notice that the original message is quoted here. Most of the time, it's a good idea to leave it in because it helps to remind the person which message you're replying to. And when you're done, you can click Send. Now, if you're emailing back and forth with someone, Gmail will group those messages into a conversation. And in your inbox, there will be a number that shows how many messages there are in that conversation. If you want to expand a specific message, you can just click on it and then you can click in this area again to minimize it. Conversations keep your inbox from getting too cluttered with lots of separate messages, and it's also just nice to be able to see the whole conversation at once. Sometimes you may receive an email that has an attachment. In this case, the attachment is a PDF. I can download it or save it to Google Drive, but with some file types, you'll only have the download option. I can also click it to see a preview. Now you should be careful when opening attachments. Some files may contain viruses, so if you don't know why someone is sending you an attachment or if it just looks suspicious, it's best not to open it. If you use Gmail at work, you may sometimes need to set up a vacation reply, which will automatically respond to emails when you're away. You can do this by going to your settings. Scroll down until you see Vacation Responder, and then you can type a message. When somebody sends you an email, this message will automatically be sent to them to let them know that you are unable to answer emails. You may want to include a phone number where you can be reached, or the name and email address of somebody else that they can contact while you're away. Also, you may want to only send a response to people in your contacts to avoid giving your whereabouts and contact info to complete strangers. 
When you're done, click Save Changes. When your vacation reply is active, you'll see this bar at the top of the screen. And you can just click End Now to turn off the vacation reply. So those are some of the ways that you can respond to emails using Gmail. Okay, so as previously shown in the video, so makita natin doon on how to reply to, in, to messages, reply to all messages, and forward messages. Okay, so now let's proceed to managing our emails. So on how to delete unwanted messages, how to archive, how to apply labels, how to add filters and the search feature. So this is very useful kapag medyo marami na yung ating messages and gusto natin na madiklutter kahit pa paano yung ating email account. Okay, so let's watch this short video to learn more on how to manage our emails. After you've been using Gmail for a while, your inbox may start to get cluttered with lots of different messages. So we're going to take a look at some of the ways to clean up your inbox and organize your messages. In your inbox, you'll see a checkbox next to each message, and you can use these to select specific messages, or you can use the checkbox at the top to select or deselect all of them. If you want to get rid of messages, you can delete them, and if they are spam messages, then you can report spam, which will delete them and also help Gmail filter out those types of messages in the future. But most of the time, you won't need to delete messages. Instead, you can archive them, which takes them out of your inbox, but puts them in a place where you can still get to them if you need to. So this option is much safer than deleting them. To see your archived messages, go to the left menu pane and click More, and go to All Mail. This will show you everything that's in your inbox, as well as all of your archived mail. To hide your archived mail, you can just go back to the inbox. You can also archive or delete a message while you're viewing it. You'll have the same options that you have when you're viewing your inbox, and it's really up to you how you want to manage your messages. Gmail has a really great feature called Labels, which you can use to organize your messages. Labels are basically folders, except you can apply more than one label to a message, and you can also create your own labels. For example, some of these emails are from friends, so I'm going to apply a label to them. If you go to the Labels button, you can place a check mark next to one or more existing labels, or you can create a new one. Type a name for the label, click Create New, and then click Create. I'm going to click this top checkbox to deselect all of these. There is now a friends label next to each of these messages, and the label also appears in the left menu pane. If you don't see it, you can click More to see the rest of your labels. To make your labels easier to see, you can color code them. Click here and choose the color you want. If you click the name of a label, then Gmail will just show the messages that have that label. This can be very useful if you have lots of emails to sort through. Archiving and labeling are even more powerful when you use them together. For example, many people like to immediately label and archive all of their new messages so that their inboxes will be as empty as possible and all of their messages will be easy to find. But you can use these features any way you want to create an organizational system that works for you. GCF Global. Okay, so that is how we create labels specifically. So, madali na naman din mag-delete, mag-archive. So, here's one example in the labeling. So, share ko muna yung aking screen. Okay. So as you can see here, I organized my email by creating a separate label dito sa ating left side pane na may title na MISD. 
So, once na naka-create ka na ng yung labels, makikita mo yun siya dito sa left side. So, if you just click that, lahat ng mga emails na naka-label mo under MISD ay nalabas. Okay? So, next is, oh, speaking of dito sa ating mail, pumapansin ninyo may bagong feature dito si Gmail wherein you can click the mail, chat, spaces, and meet. Meron ng shortcut button. So, there are times na gusto mo ng agarang reply from someone. So, emails may become very tedious. Diba? So, let's try making a chat. Okay, so similar din yan siya sa, sa Facebook na Messenger. Pero ang magamit natin dito is yung ating Gmail account. So you can chat anyone using this chat app. So click lang natin. So you can create a new chat or kung may existing na kayo, you can start a group conversation and create your space, browse spaces, and others. So for example, mag-add ako ng aking new chat. So search ko lang yung person na gusto kong i-chat. For example, si Mobina. Okay, so lalabas na yung email ni Mobina. So, you can see here a label na nakalagay external. Why? Kasi I am currently using the domain of b at bta.gov.ph na email. So, meaning si Mobina is not using a bta.gov.ph. Okay? So, external. So, this one is labeled para ma-identify natin which belong to our workspace and which does not belong. For example, gusto ko yung email si Mobina and alam ko kilala ko siya, legit, kahit na external siya sa aking workspace. Then, you can add here your messages. Hello, hi, then just click enter, magsisend na siya. Other features include here the formats, may bold, italic, underline, may color din ng text, meron din mga bullets, may strike through. You can add emojis. So since chat ito, personal, so hindi, ma hindi siya masyado ganun ka-formal, you can play around with your chat mate. Then GIFs, then pwede ka mag-upload ng file and also add a video meeting. Okay, so ito yung basic. So nakita kasi siya dito sa may chat. Okay, next is Let's proceed to the next part, which is the filter. How to create filters and the search box. Okay, so. Okay, so let's, let's watch another short video in creating filters and searching mails. In this video, we're going to talk about two features that you can use to manage your mail. Filters, which can automatically sort your mail for you, and the search mail feature, which you can use to find a specific message. Let's start by creating a filter. The first thing you should do is decide which types of messages you want to filter. In this example, I get a lot of emails from Twitter, and I'd like to automatically label all of the messages that they send me. I'll select one of the Twitter messages, Click the button here, and then click Filter Messages Like These. Here you can choose the search criteria that you want. You can filter based on the sender, subject, or keywords that appear anywhere in the message. Now it has already put in some criteria for me, based on the message that I selected a moment ago. If you need to, you can change any of these criteria. For example, I know Twitter sends me emails from several different addresses. So I'm going to change this to Twitter to make sure it catches all of the emails that they send me. When you're done, click Create Filter. Here, you'll need to choose one or more actions that you want Gmail to take when a message fits the search criteria. I want it to apply the Twitter label, and I also want to archive it so it won't appear in my inbox. I'm going to place a check mark here, so it will filter all of my existing messages that fit the criteria. And then click Create Filter. Now to view all of my Twitter emails, I can just click on the Twitter label. If you ever need to modify a filter, click on the gear icon to go into your settings, and click Filters and Blocked Addresses. And you can edit or delete any of your existing filters. Now let's say that you received a message a few months ago, and now you need to find it again. 
Instead of just scrolling through all of your messages, you can use the Gmail search box to find it. Just type some search terms, and your results will appear below. If you don't see your message here, then you can try different search terms, or you can click the drop-down arrow to do an advanced search. Filtering and searching your mail are really useful features, and once you get used to using them, you'll always be able to find your important messages whenever you need them. GCF Global. Okay, so as simple as that, um, ganun mag-create ng filters and search your means.